Good morning and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman and today I'm going to be sharing with you part two of my crumb quilting project which I started last week. I haven't gotten as far as I wanted to on this project. I've had a number of other things that I'm also working on and I'll have links below on that. My mystery quilt for fall 2023 which is the Poinsettia is in bloom. You'll want to check that out. Um, I've got a link below on that project. I also have been working on my beginning quilting class. I've got a new video coming out on Saturday for that class. And I've also been working on my Friendship Bouquet for 2023 block of the month. So I've had a lot of projects going on. And on top of all of that, I'm also working on a craft show for our church. So I've just been busy. Almost every room in my house is busy. So I'm actually upstairs again in my sewing room which is the sunroom here. It's set up differently. It's not like my quilting studio, which is where I normally video everything. But the quilting studio is filled with some other projects that I'm uh, working on. So today we're back upstairs here. And again, I do want to apologize if you hear Bailey, my Boston Terrier, snoring in the background. She loves to sleep. She's almost 11 years old and her favorite pastime is sleeping and her little kennel is right next to me. So you might hear her as we're proceeding through this. But now I want to get going and show you where I've, uh, what I've finished so far on my crumb quilt project. So as a review last week, and I will link last week's video so that you can watch the first part of this, but I showed you how I made crumb quilt fabric, and then I cut out large orange peel templates, medium size orange peel. I also cut out some hexes, half hexes, which I folded the fabric so it became a full hexy. And then I faced all of those applique pieces with this PLF36 fusible interfacing. It just happened to be a lightweight interfacing that I have. You can use any lightweight interfacing. It doesn't have to be fusible. It can be just a woven interfacing as well. But I showed you how I faced all of those and applique them. And here you can see where I have some of them applique down. And this circle is going to be put in the center. And I used a Daisy Cottage cheese lid for my template for the circle. And it is going to go on there and I will applique around that. I simply used a blanket stitch on my machine here. I have a new Janome Horizon machine, which I am, am loving. And so that's how I did it. But all of this is crumb cake fabric, excuse me, crumb fabric which um, I put together. I guess I'm hungry. I mentioned crumb cake. It makes me hungry. Um, so I put all of this together. I did get this applique. I've gotten a few more hexes created, but I do have to make at least 16 hexes, so I need to continue making fabric. Now today what I want to share with you is how I am making that fabric, not only for the hexes, but I want to show you how I'm going to make fabric in longer strips for my curved borders, my outside borders, plus I want to share with you how I'm making fabric using adding machine tape. About a year or so ago, my husband was at an estate sale and he got an entire package of adding machine tape. It was like, I think there are 12 or 16 of them in this package for two bucks. So it has been a great um, way for me to make crumb um, uh, sashing and strips of fabric. And so I am using that to do this. Let me show you some that I created this past week. And I do have this on video. You're gonna see some uh, me sewing some of this in fast motion. I don't wanna bore you with it going really slow. I will give you some specific techniques and methods that I used as I went through this. But um, here is the crumb that I put together on the adding machine tape. Now the best way to make sure that you do this is to actually um, use strips that are wide enough that they actually extend a quarter of an inch at least on both sides. However, I found that I ran into a problem in some of this. I didn't allow myself a quarter inch seam here, and I think there was some more areas. Here's another one where I didn't allow myself a quarter inch seam. So what I'm gonna have to do now is when I uh, trim this up, I first tried to trim this up using a quarter of an inch seam, using the paper and then as my guide and then cutting a quarter inch seam. However, because I did not allow myself enough fabric here, I'm literally going to have to just use the paper as the guide to cut and then my sashing is going to be narrower. It's gonna be a half inch narrower than this. So that is what I'm gonna to have to do since I didn't, or I could go back in and maybe uh, remove those and fix it, either or. But this is what I've done. I've just put strips and strips on here. 
um, you can see where I've added some that have combinations of fabrics. Sometimes I'd sew two pieces together in order to make a long enough strip so that it would work. Here's one on the very end. And so I'm gonna use this sashing fabric that will go around the perimeter of the medallion center of the quilt. In one of the clips coming up, you're going to see I had a pile of fabric here. And from that fabric, I made all of these strips, plus I made some additional fabric. And I'll show you all of that here. You'll get to see this close up here in just a moment. But from that, I made all of this fabric and the only thing I had left was this pile. It is such a great feeling to know that you've actually used up a nice big chunk of fabric, or scraps, I should say, and you've made some new fabric and you're gonna be able to use that fabric even though it doesn't look very pretty in this pile here. And it might not look very interesting here, but once it gets in a quilt, I promise you it's going to be very beautiful and you will enjoy it. And it's just a wonderful way to use up leftover fabric. I've grabbed a small chunk of the matting machine tape and I'm just gonna show you a quick little sample here of how you can get started. I've got some leftover flying or um, uh, uh, half square triangles here that I'm just gonna go ahead and use as um, part of the end. They do extend beyond uh, the adding machine tape so that'll work out well. So all you do is lay your first piece right side up on the adding machine tape. Then your second piece is gonna go right side down. Find the edge, a straight edge, on which you can sew across. And in this case, I can actually sew straight across. So here we go. And then what you wanna do every time that you press this open, you wanna make sure that you're not allowing any fold in there. You want it to be quite firmly pressed over. Now I'm gonna put this on here. This is a, a diagonal type seam, so you'll see what happens here in just a minute. I'm lining that up right sides together. I'm coming off the edge about a quarter of an inch. And you're giving it about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It doesn't really matter what size seam allowance, as long as you're covering everything. Okay, now you'll notice that this is kind of wonky there. See that? So how can I straighten that up? Well, here I've got this piece right here. In fact, I'm just going to rip that off. Now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it at a diagonal because I want to create a straight seam going across. So then this will go down there, here we go. And there we go. So I'm working my way down, oops, I got a thread there, let me get rid of that. I'm working my way down this tape. Started here, here was a skinny one. Here's some wonky ones. It's, it's really quite interesting how this all works out. And you can just keep on adding parts and pieces. Here's another one. I might put the bigger um, side over there so it will end up giving me more of a straight edge. Let's see how, how this works. Right sides together. Anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch seam allowance, whatever will work as you're putting them together. And there we go. And you'll just continue working down the tape until um, you have filled it and covered it and used up all your scraps. Now let's say you have something like I ripped this one apart and it's not big enough to, or long enough or wide enough, I guess, to fit across here. So what else could I put with this? I could sew this to this piece of fabric and kind of on the corner of it, I guess it worked and I don't know that that's still long enough I think I need to add something more let me add this black piece over here okay I'm just trying to make this strip long enough so that it will extend 
across the entire tape measure width. Okay, that might work. So again, fold that down, make sure it's folded crisply, there's no fold in it. And yes, that will extend across. Now the weird thing is that it's going to have <clears throat> something here that isn't gonna work out well. So I do need to add a little bit more length. Let me find what I can use here. We'll use this on this side. And as you can see, I am simply using and using and using scraps. It's, it's a fabulous feeling to get this stuff used up. All right, now I definitely have enough to extend a quarter of an inch on both sides of that tape measure. or adding tape, I should say. All right, there we go. And then the next one that I would put on there, I would create a straight line there, but that is how you continue working down the adding machine tape. Now let's take a look at how I'm going to trim this up. Move that out of the way. All right, so here is one that I have already um, uh, pieced together. As you can see, some of the pieces were quite long and some were not. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to try to um, um, use the adding machine tape as my guide and allow a quarter of an inch on each side. We'll see if that will work on this piece and hopefully then I can just fix that other one that had some short sections and that way I'll have a, a wider sashing. So I have allowed there to be a quarter inch. I've, I've placed that line on the adding machine tape and there's a quarter inch seam allowance on this side and this can come off. Now some of these pieces um, I can actually use. Some of these might be just too small, so they go in the pet pillow um, container. So there I have my quarter inch seam allowance and just continue on down the line here. And then if you have grandchildren or maybe your husband likes to sit and watch television, maybe he'd be willing to, or the grandchildren, to actually remove all of this paper because you will need to remove all of the paper when you're using a paper piecing technique like this. I might keep that one. All of that will go in the pet pillow. And so I'm just using the adding machine tape to line it up. So I've got one side cut and now I just need to cut the other side. And then I will need to remove the paper. All of the paper has to come off. One thing I want to mention again is whenever you're using any kind of a paper piecing, a technique or a foundation, um, definitely use a small uh, stitch length. So I am using a 1.8 stitch length in this machine. Um, use a two or a 1.8, something that is smaller. And the reason for that is that the paper will actually come out much easier if you do that. And so I have removed all my paper, it's all gone, and I do like to starch and press these. So that's what I've done. The width on this is 2.75, 2 and 3 quarter inches wide. So I will be able to get 2 and a quarter inch sashing all around the perimeter of my quilt. Now I'm going to take you to the fabric so you can see how that was done. I'm going to show you how I pieced together tiny little strips uh, to start a, um, a crumb and create a bigger piece of fabric. I am keeping in mind a couple of things. Number one, I need to have um, at least a total of 16 of those um, hexes, and they're a pretty good size. So I'm keeping that size and shape in mind, so that, that's something that I'm trying to create. I will also be creating fabric that will be big enough for my curved borders on the outside edge of the, the quilt when I get the entire center of it finished. Um, so right now I just want to start in the center and just start building out and so what I've got here I've got two pieces that I can very easily put together and so I'm just going to simply get started sewing them and I'm going to show you some fast motion clips here in a minute too where, where you'll see me put together other fabrics I always like to press the seam allowance I finger press it Make sure there's no fold in that. Uh, then I can continue working. I'm going to add this little piece right here. I'm just looking for pieces on my table here, the, the tabletop, 
that might work on um, each piece as I add and make it grow into a large crumb. So we'll do this and I'll press that open. All right, let's say I want to put this right here. I could certainly do that. And the goal is to always sew a straight line. So let's find out which angle can I place that on there so that I can accomplish that. I'm gonna sew it just like that. So here we go. And here's another thing that I like to do um, after every time that I sew, I like to trim away any excess. I just want there to be a quarter inch seam allowance. So I just keep a scissors handy here so I can get rid of it. All of this is going to go in my pet pillow for stuffing. It's just too tiny for um, crumb quilting. All right, so there we go. So I'm, I'm getting a piece here that is working out well. Let's see, what do we have here? This one's smaller. I think I'll put this one on first. So I'm kind of going in a bit of a, a circle here, which is fine. Every crumb you make is a completely different shape. I, I do not pay attention to um, fabrics. I just use what's there. I try not to repeat fabrics too much in the same area if I can help it but I'm getting rid of excess fabric there in the seam allowance. I always try to trim that up. Finger press so it's nice and straight. This is what I have here. Let's straighten that side up there. So I'm gonna put this right here. So as you can see, you can just create um, such wonderful pieces of fabric using the ugly little scraps that you happen to have hanging around your <clears throat> quilt studio. So there we go. There we go. And we're trying, now you're working with a ton of bias, so you do have to be careful that you're not causing any wonkiness. And I'm going to show you a clip here in a little bit on how to address that if you do have wonkiness. I pulled that one apart. I think I might be able to use this piece somewhere, maybe. Maybe not, I think. I'll use this long one right here and try and straighten up this edge. Trying to get rid of anything that might cause a pucker in my, oops, that got stuck on all the seams there. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of all of that excess there. We'll get rid of that. I'm trimming up to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And there we go. Now that makes that side of the black lay so much nicer. And you just continue working with whatever you have. I could certainly put that there or I could put it here. In fact, I might just do that. I will put, put that right there. And here we go. So what a crazy looking piece of fabric, right? So now I'm gonna have to grab scraps that are bigger than these tiny ones. These small ones are what you use to begin your crumb fabric with. But then you're gonna to get to a point where you actually need longer pieces. And you can create longer pieces from all of this. You can certainly do that. Or if you have some long wonky pieces in your stash, grab those and continue working around until you get this piece of fabric to the size that you want it to be, whether that's an eight inch sort of a square or maybe a 10 inch or a 12 inch or a long rectangle, whatever it is that you're needing. Then once it's put together, I definitely press it, I starch it and press it. If there's any wonkiness, you're gonna see a clip here in a little bit where I teach you what to do when you have some weird things going on in your fabric that you don't want happening. I'll show you how to address that.
If you remember at the beginning of one of the clips, I had quite a pile of crumbs here. And I have, um, since I've been making these clips, made a couple of adding machine tape crumbs. So those are going to be sashes when I get them trimmed up. Here's another one. I've also made some crumb fabric. Got one here, one there, and then this long one here. And um, I used the, my adding machine tape, which is a great way to make sashing with um, oddball pieces. This is all that I have left. And I can continue um, using all of this by just sewing it together, sewing tiny pieces together to create a bigger piece, which will go with a bigger piece. And you can continue using all of this. So all of your crumbs get used. Now I want to point out a few issues that you might run into that I do run into and I'm, I'm going to show you how you can correct it. So what I do with my fabric when I'm making crumb fabric, I make sure that I do starch it very well. I want everything to lay nice and flat and I try to trim up the seams as I go. I'll look at the back of it and if I see where I did not get some trimming done, I see something here, I'll go in and trim that up. But um, I don't get too concerned about it. It's crumb fabric and I love being able to use up everything and create something wonderful with it. So these two pieces really don't have much in the way of issues. I could square these up and make um, just a, a square of fabric that I could use in um, uh, quilts or I could actually cut out my templates which is what I'm going to be doing. I am making all of this fabric to complete that wall quilt that I started last week. So I will be cutting out hexes, half hexes, and actually it'll become full hexes because I'll fold the fabric. So that's why I'm making this. Now what I wanted to point out, I was working really hard to try and come up with these issues so I can bring them to your attention. When you're working especially with long pieces like this, you're going to run into issues where um, this is all on the bias and it's kind of wonky there. This up here is kind of wonky. And the only way that you can really address that is to cut it apart and eliminate that wonkiness and re-sew that piece, maybe re remove part of those pieces that are all wonky and, and um, attach it somewhere else. So let me grab my ruler. What I could possibly do, and it's hard for me to cut around the camera here. Let me see if I can get over here. What I might do, because this wonkiness starts right down there, I could simply cut it right there. Okay, now that piece is laying nicely. I can take this, and this piece right here is the one that's not laying properly, so I could absolutely just get rid of it. Oops. And I can start with a piece of fabric that lays better. This guy right here isn't laying properly, so I could get rid of that. Maybe I could, and I could maybe reuse those or not. So that helps to create um, fabric that's going to lay nice and flat. That's the goal. I have another issue on this side where it's not laying very well. So I could certainly eliminate that by just cutting away the issue. And I have a nice piece of fabric that's going to be laying much better. And I will starch it again. I do like to starch all of my fabric so that it lays nicely. And then I can start working with it again. Let's go ahead and trim this just to get rid of some of that. There we go. So these pieces are now going to lay much nicer than they were. And here's another issue. Look at that. We've got all kinds of fun stuff there. And I was working hard to try to get this to um, um, be crazy fabric like that, which I wanted to share with you how you can fix that. So again, in order to eliminate that, one of the things that you could do is simply go through here, whoops, and cut away this excess. You may need to cut this away right here. All right, now I've got a piece of fabric that lays nicely, 
and I can reuse these pieces in some form or fashion and make additional crumb fabric, but do it in such a way where it's not causing the waves because you don't want waves in your fabric that you're making. The last item I have to um, applique down on my center medallion for this flower is this circle here, which I had made um, using a cottage cheese lid as my template for both the fuse as well as the, or the interfacing as well as the uh, fabric itself. And I'm just going to use a straight stitch. There's a lot of thickness here that I've got to go through all the way around because there's thickness in all of these seams. Um, with lots of seam allowances coming together in that crumb fabric. So I'm just going to do a straight stitch, an edge stitch, all the way around this uh, quilt here. I have my needle position down, which means that every time I stop and need to turn my fabric, my presser foot is automatically going to lift just a little bit here for me, which allows me to turn. And um, there you go, see how that happens? And then I can just slowly turn my fabric and as I press on the presser foot, or on the uh, foot pedal, excuse me, um, it immediately goes back down again and I keep sewing. It's one of the things I love about this machine. It does get hung up a little bit over the um, really thick edges here. I should have uh, reduced my presser, pressure um, on the presser foot and I have that option here let me find it on the machine and see if I can make an adjustment to that all right I made an adjustment to the pressure of the foot on the fabric to a negative three which will hopefully allow me to get over these very thick seams easier so let's see how that works oh yeah that's much better I can easily walk over it now. That's a wonderful option on this machine. I love that. And then I'm going to do a locking stitch. The center of my quilt is appliqued and ready to go, so now I'm going to add my sashing borders. And here I'm going to be adding my sashing to the sides of the center medallion quilt. One of the things that I always do when I'm um, putting a crumb sashing, in this case it's a pieced um, sashing from the adding tape, I'm putting that around the center of this medallion quilt, but I am squaring up everything so that as I continue adding borders, my quilt remains square. That is so important. So I've gone around and I have done that on all sides. And I'm going to lay this on the floor in the front room here so that you can actually see this. I've added the sash to the outside of the quilt. So this quilt is now finished to this point. And now I need to complete my hexes and get those hexes around the outside perimeter of the quilt. So let's uh, get working on that. I am now cutting my templates. These are the hexes from the fabric. I've already cut a few from the fabric that I've made. And I'll just show you here again how I've done this. Last week we covered how I cut it. I covered how I faced each of these templates or each of these hexes with the interfacing and how I applied them to the squares. And I've decided, as I laid this out on the floor, um, I've got the medallion and the blocks surrounding it. I think I'm gonna make nine of the hexes. Some of the blocks will be um, empty and they'll just be great for quilting opportunities. And then I'm going to start making additional fabric, probably longer pieces like this, which will allow me to create the nice curved or scalloped outer border that I'm going to be making from crumb fabric. And here is how I'm going to cut. And you saw me do this last week. Lots of seams were going through there. And then this leftover pieces, I will actually sew those back together and just keep creating more fabric with it. And you saw me do that last week. 
So all of these leftover chunks that I'm cutting away, I will still be using. I cut this on the fold and I ended up with a complete hexi. And this hexi will be faced with that interfacing that I showed you at the beginning of the program here. And here are these leftover chunks. I'm going to sew those all together and keep creating uh, strips, long, long rectangles of crumb fabric from which I'm going to cut out my scalloped outer border. So far today, this is what I have accomplished. I have my blocks cut out. They are 10 and a half inch background squares. I have a total of six, um, seven, eight, I guess I have eight of the hexagons that I'm going to be placing and appliquing around those. Some of those are already appliqued. Some of them have not even been faced yet. And I'll be using the um, interfacing there to actually face the um, applique units and then all of that will get put together and then next week what I plan to do is get a scalloped edge created. Not sure if I'm just going to make the fabric and then uh, cut it out in this shape or if I will create the paper piecing and then just um, uh, use it as a crumb or a like we did with the adding machine where I uh, pieced strips across it. I will work on that next week. We'll see how far I get here. But I did want to give you an idea of where I've come, gotten to this far this afternoon. I've got a ways to go, lots of work to do, but it sure has been fun. I hope that you're joining me, that you are going ahead and putting together some scraps of your own and doing some crumb quilting. Um, these, this is a real fun, simple quilt to make. Um, there is a lot of fabric that I'm putting together, but it's going together quite quickly and it will really be fun to quilt this once I get this finished. I love all of the negative space, which will allow me to have a, real, a good time in um, doing some free motion quilting, some feather quilting, maybe some ruler quilting. We'll see how that goes. Thanks so much for joining Bailey and I as we were working today on our crumb quilt wall quilt. My name is Lori Dickman. This is Quilting with Lori. We will see you next week. Have a great week and happy quilting.